Here's some here's some brake drums. If you really want to call them brake drums, they <laughs> look more like boat anchors. But uh, again, this part of the, the heavy duty uh, parts that we do have for trucks uh, of all different vintages. And the stuff here behind us is is uh, doors and and tailgates and and uh, bigger pieces, uh, doors themselves, and, and some more bumpers, bumper covers, so forth. These are more of the metal tubs that we talked about earlier. There are two rows here, and there's two or three or four rows over there. Of There's 250 of these tubs. It's just raw weight by the, by the pound. And it could be anything in any of them. And the inventory shows you what metal tub it's in and what quadrant of that tub that you can find it in. These are some more metal tubs. Uh, that are part of the 250 that, that are around the building. And again, it's sectioned into four pieces, and, and uh, you can uh, hopefully find what you need in, in one of the sections. And over here is we bought a, a company out of uh, Apache Junction, Arizona, called Dealer Auto Parts. The fellow who ran it. Uh, passed away and his wife uh, wanted to get rid of the business and, and uh, so we went out there with uh, myself and another fellow that worked here and uh, we went out and, and loaded four trailer loads of parts in a week, brought them back here, unloaded them exactly the same way that they had them out there. So our inventory and their inventory was matched together within the first day that, that we got it all put up. Then when we got these four put away, we went back out and got the other four. So there was a total of, of eight semi-loads of parts from this dealer auto parts. Now that was the smaller of the, of the two buys. Prior, prior to this one by oh, four or five years, uh, dealer auto parts up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Fairboat, uh, he wanted to uh, divest himself of, the, of his operation. So uh, we bought all the parts that he had up there. Uh, it was an interesting buy because we staged a, a semi. He would load it and ship it down. They would stage another one, and it just, he loaded it and, and so forth, and, and it just was a continuous uh, feed till the whole thing was, was moved from up there down here. And it was probably, I don't remember, but it's, it's probably um, 20, 30 semi-loads, something of that nature. Um, you know, when you say it fast, it don't sound like much. <laughs> Here we're coming into the, the other building. We're, we're leaving the original building, that, or the building that was built uh, in the 60s, 70s. And uh, this particular building here that we're in, which had all the, the metal and so forth in it, uh, was built in 1942. It was finished in 42. And it was made, uh, the government uh, confiscated all the property from 
Roselawn Park all the way to Langdon Farm, which is probably a half a mile, and took the property from the folks who owned it and turned it into a, a war complex. They operated it for 90 days, and then they walked away from it. The war was over. So the, the, the building was never, basically never used for uh, government use. How long have you been in the building? Uh, we moved in in 93, and um, we were over on the west side of town in some rental property, and it was an interesting story. That I had to drive by here twice a day going over there and back, and I always looked at this property and wanted it and so on and so forth, but it was never for sale. Well, the rental business evidently got in a bad way, so some elderly fellow called me, and I always got half a dozen calls or more a year on, on the program, and he said that, that this building was, was uh, rentable, did we want to rent anything? And I said, I went off on the guy because I was the last I wanted to hear, you know. And, and I said, unless that, whatever it is for, is for sale, leave me alone, I hung up on him. And it wasn't but about a month later, the same fella calls me back, and he says, uh, the, the building is for sale. And I said, what building? And he says, the one you want to buy. And I said, oh, okay, how much is it? He tells me how much is it, how much it was, and I said, there's no way it's worth that. He hangs up on me. So... So I'm thinking, huh, now what? <laughs> so it wasn't, but a few days later he calls me back and, and uh, we get together on it and the rest is history. But that's how the, there's this building and that building and they're, they're separate walls and everything, but they're actually two buildings together here. It's over 120,000 square feet, both pieces plus the, what, We'll see downstairs. This is just part of our memorabilia. This this sign and so forth came from Rush Motors in Columbus, Ohio, just east of Columbus, and uh, they went out of business, and and we went up to the auction and, and purchased. Them. So where are we going now? This looks a little, uh, a little scary, scary down here. Scary. <laughs> this is the access to the basement I was talking about. Uh, there's a ramp that goes down, and uh, this is where they. There's 87 concrete piers, which aren't really piers, they're backs. And uh, they pretty much fill up the basin. But we do use it for storage. And uh, you can see back there, we'll, we put them in between the, these are actually hollow vats. And uh, it's again 400 feet to the back, like it is up up on the top, same as the other building. And when you get down to the center, there's a a boiler room and, and so forth to uh, take care of the heat and this that and the other. But there never was a boiler, and uh, I don't think there was ever any coal in the two coal pens that was going to service the, the building. So. Uh, this is, it's kind of difficult to inventory stuff down here, but you do the best you can with what you got to work with.